Welcome back to Waterpark Rangers Let's Play Pikmin 2. Last episode, we entered this last dungeon before we cleared the debt, the submerged castle, um, and we found some bullmen to join our party. And in addition, while we were carrying back this giant donut, fiery dweevils have jumped down from that pipe uh, up above and are currently trying to steal a treasure from us. Now, uh, fiery dweevils are very annoying because the longer you keep fighting them, the longer they keep stalling you, and they do a good job of it too. This is a really, really horrible trap. The closer that five minute time limit approaches. And believe me, you want to be... The whole idea is just get out of the symbol before that five minutes happens. Otherwise, uh, you have to put up with a lot of crap. Uh, anyway, we are currently luring... Or bringing back the donut. Luring back the donut? Is that even a thing? And uh, I should mention this thing about Bulbman. I kind of just said that they were Bulborb slash Pikmin. And while that might not really seem like anything special, there were a couple things I forgot to mention about them that should... Uh, be noted. Very important that, it's, that these things are noted. Number one, Bullman cannot leave the dungeon with you. Once you depart from the dungeon, the Bullman are going to stay behind. Now, this doesn't count as Pikmin deaths. Um, however, you won't find those Bullman once you come back in, which is kind of sad when you think about it. Who knows? Maybe they find a way out of the cave and live at a perfectly wonderful above-ground resort somewhere. Yes, that's exactly what happens to Bullman that don't leave the dungeon with you. But the whole point is they don't count towards your death total. Um, but if they do... If they do join your party, though, they will they will count towards your death total, like if they die in battle. And that being said, their special abilities in battle, um, they are not more strong than any of your Pikmin when you fight. However, they are resilient to the following hazards, fire, electricity, poison, and water. Um, as you saw, they were moving through the water, and that way they're just like real Bulborbs, because Bulborbs are seemingly immune to all of that stuff, which is kind of cool. So if, as basically, when you have Bulbman in your party, you don't need to fear elemental hazards. Uh, explosions are, of course, dangerous, even though somehow explosions don't affect them when they're when they're not um, called to your side, which is very strange. And I don't mean you can like press X and dismiss them, and then bombs won't work on them. That's not how it works at all. It's just really strange programming. Before you defeat the Bullman that leads them, bombs won't affect them. That's all I'm trying to say. And it's taken a lot of effort to say it. And uh, the next sub level is really actually the evil one that I consider to be pretty dangerous because it's going to have the electricity on it. Now, Bullmen, of course, are going to be able to be fine against that electricity, but Blues need to take extra caution because electricity is insta death, so that you do have to take that into account. Also, what is this? Is it like a cheese wheel? It's kind of like a cheese wheel to me. It almost looks like tape at the same time. Maybe the name will, will cure us, will uh, clue us into it. It's true nature. Any day now? Name. Confection hoop. It would be great if there was one just called name. Actually, no. That wouldn't be great. That would just be stupid. Also, you saw that entrance to the dungeon there was actually blocked off by a special rock seal. That, spe that specific seal just needs to have Pikmin attack it in order to break it open. It's really only there to stall you and make you nervous. Um, it also basically means that you do need to bring Pikmin to it in order to enter it. You can't enter a hole that's sealed, so they gotta uh, break off the seal to jump down, basically. Which can get a little bit anno annoying if your five minutes are up and the horror is unleashed upon you and you're trying to s escape the sub as soon as possible. sub 3! This is arguably the largest and most maze-like of them. Maybe the next one is larger, but not as much of a maze. Um, electricity is a common hazard here, but you also have things like withering blowhogs. Um, they're a frequent enemy. And now I believe there is also a Wallywog on this floor, as well as another Bullman. And of course, the Bullman is actually quite a ferocious enemy. I was really glad that a Bomb Rock was able to off it. I got so lucky that that happened. Because um, typically, those things are just really dangerous to your Pikmin because of how quickly they eat. Uh, typically, I'd recommend just punching them out. But I do know that it's also a good idea to uh, just time your throws and uh, the, watch, let the Bullman walk slowly towards you and then throw a Pikmin at it. Yep, there's a Wallywog in here. And then throw a Pikmin at it. Um, and throw them at its back over its head and just keep doing that until it dies. It really doesn't have much stamina at all. Uh, however, we are pretty lucky here because I, I feel like we were able to... Yeah, I can see the Bullman on the other side of the wall. We're luring it into the wall, so... Maybe if we have one captain stay here, we can distract it. Which is... This is always my strategy for roaming enemies. This is what I try to do to bull bears, but I couldn't do it to the one in L Glutton's Kitchen because of the way that uh, the walls are designed in the Glutton's Kitchen dungeon is different from the other dungeons. Kind of sad. And our bullmen need not fear electricity, and they disposed of that quite easily. Oh, that was dangerous. Uh, electricity's insta-death. I always get a little bit nervous around it, because it all takes us a little screw-up for you to instantly lose all those Pikmin. You can't whistle them. Just as soon as it hits them, they're gone. And now we can easily throw Pikmin at the bullmen without really worrying. Or can we? Yes, we can. 
And let's call those bullmen into our party. Good, they've fallen into our number. They have fallen into our number. And now from here, we can just make off with that giant cookie. A lot of the treasures in Submerged Castle happen to be, like, cookies and stuff, and I'm not really sure why that's the case. And we have yet another sealed exit. Uh, Subbul 4 also has a sealed exit. So, I guess the sealed exit's also introduced here. Though the sealed exit's hardly ever used anywhere. The only place I can think of that has a sealed exit is one floor in the semi-final dungeon and a couple floors in last. It's odd, there are just like these things that are programmed into the game which are really odd and then just aren't used that often. Like bread bugs and uh, falling rocks <laughs> and sealed exits. Alrighty then, uh, there should be three treasures here, um, and I think there's three on the next one also. Anno Dweevil. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this last episode. No, 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 that's not, not what I meant. When we were in the shower room, we encountered an Anno Dweevil. They're just basically Dweevils, but yellow like fire Dweevils. HP and everything about them is pretty much the same, I think. Um, but they're a little bit more nasty because, as you know, electricity is insta-kill. So if you screw up fighting Anno Dweevil, um, they're arguably very evil because they can kill your Pikmin in one hit. That wasn't even an intended pun. But, uh, yes, Dweevil is supposed to be, like, Weevil and Evil and don't know where the Dwee came from. Dweller? Underground? With a capital D? I don't know. <laughs> there should be another treasure back here. Yep, there is. Oh, uh, there's also an ivory candy pot butt on this floor. Though I'm not sure if I can recommend that you use it. Number one, because I'm not sure if you really need those extra five whites. Because they might be more trouble than they're worth. And I forgot that the Withering Bullhog dropped this thing here, so let's just grab it. Um, because... The Bullman can go through the water just fine, and it's great to be able to traverse the water, which is like, as you've noticed, the water is like everywhere in this dungeon. So it's tough to bring along whites. The good news is there's less water on the next two floors. Um, actually this floor, this dungeon is only five floors deep, so after you get past the next one, it's easy sailing, you don't have to worry at all. I mean, smooth sailing. Jeez, I have to stop saying easy sailing, I said it at some other point as well. And there was a Wilson, uh, little lid. I think that's supposed to go on the tubes that hold tennis balls as well. Surprised to know that. So it's really up to you whether you want to bring along this white Pikmin or not. I mean, like, because of the five-minute thing, and the five-minute problem, usually it happens to be on this floor. Um, we might actually be able to get all the treasures and get out, though, because we're carrying back the last treasure currently, and I think I am going to get those uh, those white Pikmin. Now, I recommend uh, using your Boldman, even though they're invincible to all elements. Boldman can't leave the dungeon, yet white Pikmin can leave the dungeon, so what you want to do is take your Boldman, and turn them into other kinds of Pikmin that can leave the dungeon with you. This actually technically increases your population when you leave, if you do it right. Which we're gonna do right. Kinda cool little effect. Haha, <laughs> only 10? I was expecting that this would get us over the 10,000 mark, but no, we need 30 more Pokos to clear the debt. Apparently, we just don't have quite enough. Also, I'm surprised that the uh, thing hasn't happened to us yet. Typically, it happens to me on this level. Also, this is an incredible run, I have to say. Um, usually all the deaths in this dungeon, and they happen en masse, is usually because of the electricity on this floor. Usually I lose a lot of Pikmin to the Bullman, to the electricity, and to the 5 minute trap. But I don't think we're going to have to worry about the 5 minute trap here. But maybe I'll wait just long enough to get it to appear. I don't think we're going to have to wait for- Oh, mid tights, you kidding me? Maybe we can get some nectar out of them if we throw well. If we throw good on the Pikmin. Yes, there is apparently this football player named Th Lafonte Throw Good. Like, literally, throw, like, throw good, like, to throw a ball well, throw good, it's just, I can't believe that's a real name. <laughs> it's like, you might as well call, like, a professional, like, soccer slash football everywhere else in the world player, like, Santiago Kickswell, or something like that. <laughs> Seriously. And yes, because we still want speed. Oh no, I was saying we needed the nectar, it's because of this, five minutes are up. Look at this thing, this is what appears after five minutes. It's the dungeon's boss, the Water Wraith. What is this? I can see it with my optical receptors, but my sensors cannot detect it. Could its physical form be anchored in another dimension? Attacking it is futile. If only we were to force it to take its current form, I mean its physical form, but in its current state... Zer, zer, danger, danger, danger! Basically, this is an invincible enemy. You can't hurt it in any way, but boy, can it hurt you. Basically, it'll just roll over your entire party. Whenever it appears on the floor, this is my recommendation. Get the heck out! Um, unless you're really bold and think you can get treasures while sneaking around it while it tries to roll off your Pikmin, because it's gonna just go... It's gonna patrol everywhere in the level, crushing everything in its path. Um, that's my advice to you, is just leave the sub-level. But if you're daring and want to get treasure while it's rolling around, um, just try and keep your Pikmin deep in corners concentrated, because it can't roll in the very corner of the corner. 
Now, I'll explain more about the water wreath next episode, because we were out of time here, so I'll see you then, alright?